Hello everybody, welcome to another Python tutorial. This tutorial is going to be discussing how to calculate percent change. This is actually a highly debated topic uh, amongst uh, accountants and the like. So you know it's an exciting, it's just going to be so awesome. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. The calculation of percent change, for the most part, is a relatively easy calculation. Uh, although not only do people disagree with... Um, the denominator at times. Uh, they also disagree with the conversion of that denominator at other times. So let's go ahead and just hop into it. The, the formula that we'll be using and that a lot of people use with percent change is new minus the old divided by the old times 100. Now you will find some people that are going to give you new minus the old divided by the new times 100. Now What's the purpose for percent change? Well, generally, you have two major purposes for percent change that I see a lot. The first one is going to be um, to calculate some sort of profit, and and so like you'll say like you know we, we've we've or growth, right? Um, so if your new minus the old divided by the old times 100 will tell you how much growth you had in terms of where you came from to where you are now. So. Um, I think a good example for something like this would be like say you started at $80 and now you have $100. Well, 20 out of 80 is a quarter, right? So it's it's 25%. Uh, so from 80 to 100, you grew 25%, right? Because your starting point was 80. But some people want to say new minus the old divided by the new for percent change, and that would only that would be really 20 out of 100. So really, they're they're saying you only grew 20 percent. Um, I I don't understand that why you would do that, but that is what how some people calculate it. That will not be how we're going to do that. It's going to be new minus the old divided by the old times 100. Now the other thing that comes into question is when old is a negative number. Uh, so say you were so it comes in the question a lot whenever companies uh, like a lot of companies lose money for a quarter and then the next quarter they gain come or they gain money and the question is how do we calculate percent change of that so I'll show you in a second how that um, affects things now you wouldn't think that percent change is such a highly debated topic but it actually is so sorry to start the tutorial out with that but that you just have to make you aware that you might have to fight people on how you how you calculate percent change. Anyway, I'm a nerd. So, uh, sample, we're just gonna make a sample bit of data. We'll just make it, uh, just anything. You could type it with me or you can just make it up. Uh, five, six, one, three, six, three, two. And let's throw some negatives in there. Negative five, negative 19, negative five again, two, zero, one, um, six. Cool. So that's just like some sample data. Now let's define a percent change uh, function. So we're going to say uh, define percent change, and then we're going to have two parameters. We're going to have the start point, so wherever you know, the data starts, and then the uh, current point. And this brings me to another uh, point. Uh, I only discussed the first reason people might use percent change. The second reason people might use percent change is to normalize a line. So like if you're comparing two, let's say, companies, um, you can compare them by percent growth instead of maybe revenue growth, right? So instead of comparing them by dollars, you can compare, compare them by percent change. Uh, then you can chart them on the exact same chart and you can really compare them very easily. So that's another reason why people would use percent change. Um, it's just a way to normalize a line very simply. So percent change, start point to current point. What's the percent difference? So what we're going to do is have this function really only be one line and it's going to return the float of whatever the current point is um, minus the start point so this is new minus the old right and then we're going to go divided by the old and we're going to throw some absolute value bars around it so start point then when we're all done, we multiply it by 100. Now just for the record, we want to say float here, just in case. So here we're using all whole numbers. 
and Python does not naturally divide into a floating point uh, decimal. It will automatically just divide into uh, uh, whole numbers if you don't start with some sort of floating point. So that's what we're doing. We're just kind of forcing it to use, you know, typical division. So anyway, so new minus the so uh, here, new minus the old divided by the old times 100.00 again. Um, cool. So now what we want to do, now that we've defined this percent change function, we're just going to say for each n, for like each number in sample, pc for percent change equals percent change. And then where is our starting point, right? The first parameter is start point. Well, that's just, that's easy. That's sample zero. And where is the current point? Well, each n. And then when we're all done, let's go ahead and do this. We'll say we'll print each n, and then we'll print like these little bars here so we can divide it or see like the difference. And then PC. So cool. So let's save that and let's go ahead and run that and like look at the output. So here's the output that we've got. Um, so obviously the first number, there's no percent change, right? Uh, from 5 to 5, and then from 5 to 6, you've got a 20% change. From 5 to 1, you've got a negative 80% change. From 5 to 3, negative 40% change, uh, and so on. Now the next question is, uh, what was I talking about before with uh, you know the absolute value? So let's just take away the absolute value. So uh, we'll just this will be it'll be pasted right below this one, so it won't really matter. So let's take away the absolute value and see what happens. Um, you'll see it's, it's, there's no change, uh, and there's no change because this did not like it, the five, right? The five that we're dividing by. So what happens is is when you divide by a negative, what mathematics does, but when you go from you know five to all of these numbers, including a negative. It, com it computes, you know, the negative correctly. But let's say you actually went from, uh, let's make 5 a negative 5. Let's return the absolute value for now. Let's run that, and let's see. So we started from negative 5, and we went to 6. I would call that a positive movement, and I assume you guys would too. <laughs> and we are indeed returned a positive 220%. Uh, percent. Then as we kind of decline a little bit to 5, now it's only a 120%. Now we go back up to 3, 160, 6, 220, blah, 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 blah. Then we get to negative 5, no doubt a 0% change. Negative 19, well, now we've actually lost, and we actually have a negative. Okay, I think you guys get it. So now let's take away the absolute value bars and do the typical uh, percent change calculation. Now we can see from a negative 5 to a positive 6, we have a quote unquote negative 220% movement as if we lost something. Uh, then we get you know to negative 19 and suddenly we've got a positive change, right? So this is kind of why it matters um, what your actual goal is, right? So if you wanted to make the movement from a negative five to a six, um, in theory, you, you could get there by doing negative five minus um, a negative number and that would give you a plus and you could move forward and so you can, you can kind of see how this negative 220 is, is appearing but at the same time that's not actually the result that we're looking for especially if we're either looking to measure growth or even decline right so from a negative 5 to a negative 19 that would be called a, de a, a decline right or, or, or really I guess if you're this would be fine if you're measuring decline right you had 280 percent change in your decline or growth in your decline. But if you're trying to measure growth, really this was a backwards movement, right? From negative 5 to negative 19. This should be a negative. Um, and then same thing if you're trying to normalize lines and compare two different lines. Gosh, if one line is starting with a negative 5 uh, or a negative at all, you're in trouble. You're going to have a really hard time normalizing the lines. So that's why I throw in the absolute values there. It just makes more sense to me logically. So every time I've ever used a percent change, I'm actually looking either to normalize a line or um, either normalize for comparison or actually measure some sort of growth. Um, so that's that's why I think you should throw in the absolute value bars. Anyway, um, something tells me no one else is going to care uh, that I did that, but felt like I better defend it. So anyways, hopefully you guys learned something new. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.